All right, YouTube, coming up on this one, I'm going to be discussing virtual links and what problems are we looking to solve and OSPF when we use them. What I'm going to do is an overview of virtual links and explain what they are and why exactly do we need them. Then we will do a lab and I'll show you how to configure a virtual link. I'm also going to show you what the network looks like before we add the virtual link. Then I will show you what it looks like afterwards so you can see exactly what we accomplished after configuring the virtual link. All of that coming up right now. If you have your CCNA or you're preparing for your CCNA, this little nugget I'm about to drop, you might already know. When we design our OSPF network, we have one of two options. We can deploy one area everywhere, so all of our routers and their links will be in one area, or we can split the network into multiple areas. So some routers and links will be in one area, while other routers and links will be in other areas. If you go with the second option and use multiple areas like how we have here in our lab, there's a rule that says every area must connect to area zero, which is the backbone area. That's how you're going to interconnect all of the other areas, which are considered non-backbone areas. Now connecting a non-backbone area to area zero is a really simple task. You only need one router in the area who also connects to area zero. This means some of his links are in the non-backbone area and some of his links are in the backbone area. We call those routers ABRs or area border routers. So looking at our example here, router two would be an ABR because it has a link not only in area 10, but also a link in area zero. Now, if you're an ABR, you have a pretty important job because it's the ABR that makes it possible for us to learn about links that are not in our area. If you're familiar with the LSA types, you know about the type 3 or the summary LSA. It's generated by the ABR describing links in other areas. So router 2, being the ABR, must generate LSA type 3 for all areas that it's a member of. It generates an LSA type 3 for area 0. It does this to describe the link between router 2 and router 3. That's in area 10. And then it generates an LSA type 3 for area 10. The type 3 LSA for area 10 will be describing the link not only in area 0 between router 1 and router 2, but also any other link that router 2 also learned in area 0 from other ABRs that are in non-backbone areas as well. So a router 1 somehow connected to another non-backbone area like area 1, Whatever links he learns in area one, he generates a type three LSA for area zero describing those links. So when router two gets that information and he generates his own LSA type three, it's not only going to describe links in area zero, but also links that he learned from router one that could potentially be in area one. And then any other ABR that he learned the links from through LSA type three. But if you look at area 20, it connects to area 10 and does not connect to area 0. So router 3 has a link in area 10 and area 20, but no link in area 0. And router 4 has its only link in area 20, so neither one is connected to the backbone area, which means area 20 isn't connected to area 0. So your problem is that area 20 does not have a true ABR. Even though router 3 has links in multiple areas, none of his links are in the backbone area. So he is not an ABR. With that being the case, routers that are only inside of area 20, like router 4, won't learn about links in other areas. And routers outside of area 20, like 1 and 2, won't learn about links that are in area 20. So in a way, you're isolating area 20 from the rest of the network. Now we want to fix this, we need a way of connecting area 20 to area 0. One thing we can do is connect a second link between router 2 and router 3 and put this link in area 0. Now router, er, not router, now area 20 has a router that connects back to area 0 and router 3. And now router 3 becomes an ABR and can now generate LSAs into area 20 and out of area 20 going into area 0. Now, if you don't want to make or add a physical link, the second option is to do this virtually with a virtual link between router 2 and router 3. This virtual link will be established between the routers over area 10 and the virtual link will always be in area 0. So the virtual link gives you the same effect as connecting a physical link between the two routers. The end result is that area 20 now connects to the backbone area and is no longer segmented from the network. So this is one use case 
of connecting or using a virtual link when you have an area that is not connected to the backbone area it's going to get isolated from the rest of the network and you can use a virtual link in order to fix that problem now before we get into the lab let's take a look at the current state of the network and then we will look again after we do the virtual link to see what changed so we're going to start on router 4 because he's the only router who has links only in area 20 so right now he's only in the area that has the problem and let's kind of see what his view of the network looks like so we type show ip route ospf right now he's not learning about any routes in ospf so the link between 2 and 3 that's in area 10 he's not learning about the link between 1 and 2 in area 0 he's not learning about if we take a deeper look and look at the OSPF database to see what LSAs are router 4 learning about. We see that he is learning about router LSAs, which is LSA type 1, inside of area 20. So he sees a router LSA from router 3, and then this is his own router LSA that he generated for area 20. But what you don't see are LSA type 3s. Remember, LSA type 3s are the summary LSAs describing links that are in other areas. So since router 4 does not see any LSA type 3s, it means that when we do a show IP route OSPF, none of those links are showing up as inter area routes. And again, this is because area 20 is not connected to area 0. So there's no ABR to generate LSA type 3 describing the links that are in other areas. Now let's also take a look at router 1 who's over here in area 0 and let's see what does he see. So let's come over to router one let's do a show ip route ospf so right now router one sees one inter area link or inter area route that's the link between two and three that's in area 10 but you didn't see the link between three and four in area 20. so we come back over to router one we don't see that link if we look at the ospf database inside of area zero we do see a summary lsa which is type three but we only see a summary LSA for the link between two and three. Okay, and that's why when we do a show IP route OSPF, it shows up as an inter area route. But you do not see a summary LSA for the link between three and four, which is why it's not showing up. Now, let's take a second and look at the database from router two's perspective. So if we do a show IP OSPF database, you're going to see that router 2 has LSAs for two areas because he's in two areas. So he has to have a copy of the database for each area. If you look at the LSA for area 0, you see a summary LSA. It was generated by router 2 because he's the ABR and it's describing the link between 2 and 3. So it's describing this link right here. That's why when we came over to router 1 and we did a show IP OSPF database, we saw that router one had a summary link state advertisement of a summary LSA describing the link between two and three that was originated by two, who was the ABR. Now, if we come back over to two, if we look at area 10, you're going to see that there's also a summary LSA for area 10. It was also generated by router two, who was the ABR, and it's describing the link between one and two. Okay, that link happens to be in area zero. So you can see what the role of the ABR is. He generates LSA type three describing links in other areas. And if router two had received link state advertisements or summary LSAs from ABRs who were in other areas, then you would see those described under area 10 as LSA type threes as well. So as you, if you're an ABR, you don't just generate LSA type three describing routes in area zero, but you also generate LSA type three describing links in other areas that you learn from other ABRs in area zero. Like for example, if I come over to router one and let's just say I create a loopback zero interface, I give it an IP address of all ones and a 255, 255, 255 mask. And I'm just gonna put my loopback in area one. All right, so right now, router one is an ABR because he has one link that's in area zero and his loopback is in area one, so he's an ABR. If you look at the database on router one, so if I do a show IP OSPF database, 
I spell database correctly, you're going to see that there are two type 3 LSAs for area 0. There's the one describing the link between 2 and 3. They're router 2 generated. And here's the, the loop back of router 1. They're router 1 generated. So there are two summary LSAs for area 0. So if we come back over to router 2 and I hit my up arrow key, if you look at the summary links they advertise me for area 10, notice that one of them includes router 1's loop back. So router 2, he got the LSA type 3 describing router 1's loop back in area 0. So when he generates LSA type 3 for area 10, it's not only going to be describing the link between 1 and 2 that's in area 0, this link right here, it's also going to be router 1's loop back that is in area 1. Okay, so if we come over to router 3, do a show IP OSPF database. If we look at the summary LSA inside of area 10, you see that both of them were generated by router 2, who was the ABR. This is the one describing the link between 1 and 2, and then this is the one describing router 1's loop back. But the whole key is you don't see no summary LSAs for area 20. And that's because there is no true ABR for area 20. So there's no way that area 20 can learn about links that are in other areas. So that's why if you come over to router 4, who happens to only be in area 20, you don't see any LSA type 3s, which means router 4 is not learning about any prefixes outside of his area. Okay, router 3 is able to because he's in area 10 who does have a true ABR in router 2. Okay, but routers like router 4 who are only in area 20, they won't learn about links outside of area 20. So to fix this, what we are going to do is configure a virtual link between 2 and 3. Remember, you can also just connect the physical link between 2 and 3 and put that link in area 0. But what we're going to do is configure a virtual link between 2 and 3 inside of area 10. And when we do that, that's going to make 3 a ABR because he's now going to have a link that's in the backbone area, which is this area 0, and he's going to have a link in area 20 and area 10. So all we're doing with the virtual link is extending this area 0 out to router 3 so that area 20 can connect to the backbone area, which is this area 0. So let's start on router 2. We're going to go into global configuration mode. You go under the OSPF process. You say area, and then you have to put the area number where you're trying to establish the virtual link. In our example, we're trying to establish the virtual link over area 10, so then we put area 10. Then we're going to say virtual link, and now we have to put the router ID of the router we're trying to establish the virtual link with. Okay, I know it says IP address right here, but it actually needs the router ID. So if we scroll back up, if we look inside of the database for area 10, this is router 3's router ID. So that's what we need to put. So we're going to put that, and I'm going to hit enter. Okay, now I need to do the same thing on the other end. I need to come to router 3. I need to go under the OSPF process say area 10 virtual link and I now need to put router 2's router ID which is this right here alright so we're going to scroll down I'm going to paste that there and hit enter now in the second we should get a log message coming up saying that router 2 and router 3 have a new adjacency over the virtual link you can see it right here so if I do show IP OSPF neighbor show IP OSPF neighbor you're gonna see that router 3 has two neighbor adjacencies over to router 2 one over the gig link that's in area 10 and one over the virtual link that's in area 0 now what I want to do is do a show IP OSPF database because I want you to see what changed so before I do that let's scroll up so when we did a show IP OSPF database before we only saw LSAs for area 10 and area 20 because at the time 3 was only members of area 10 and area 20. 
So we saw router LSAs for area 10 that included two and three. We saw summary LSAs for area 10 originated by two, describing the loopback of router one and the link between one and two. But inside of area 20, all we saw were router LSAs. We saw a router LSA for three and a router LSA for router four. But now I'm gonna do a show IP OSPF database again, and I want you to notice the difference. We now see LSAs for area zero. So now router three is a member of the backbone area through the virtual link. So if I come back over to router three, we see inside of area zero, we have router one's router LSA, we have two's LSA, type one, which is the router LSA, and router three generated his own router LSA because he's now a member of area zero through the virtual link. Okay, notice that inside of area zero, we have summary LSAs. Okay, we have a summary LSA generated by router one describing his loopback. We have a summary LSA generated by router two describing the link between two and three. But I also want you to notice we have summary LSA generated by router three. Okay, router three generated his own summary LSA describing the link between two and three, but he also generated LSA type three describing the link between three and four, which is in area 20. Okay, so now if I were to come over to router one, for example, who is in area zero, and I do a show IP OSPF database, Inside of area zero, you see that we now see the link between three and four. It was generated by router three. So if I do a show IP route OSPF, now I'm seeing an inter area route for the link between three and four. And that's because when we configured the virtual link, three became an ABR. He generated LSA type three describing this link in 20 and he flooded it into area zero. So now router one has LSA type three describing that link. Now I also want to come back to router four and let's see what changed. Okay, so previously we did show IP OSPF database. We only saw router LSAs for area 20. We saw one for router three and one for router four. And when we did a show IP route OSPF, nothing showed up because we weren't learning the LSA type threes in area 20. If I hit my up arrow key, do a show IP OSPF database again, I want you to notice the difference. We're now learning LSA type threes inside of area 20. So we're learning about the LSA type three describing router one's loop back, the link between one and two, and the link between one and three. We're learning about them through the summary LSA. So if I do a show IP route OSPF, now I'm learning about inter area routes that I wasn't learning about before. So now if I do my ping over to router one, the ping works where previously it was failing. So this is what we're trying to accomplish when we configure a virtual link. Before the virtual link, 20 was isolated from all the other areas. Even though 20 and 10 were connected back to back, 20 was still isolated because 20 must have a connection to area zero and it didn't. So even though 10 and 20 are, are connected back to back, they're still isolated from each other. So routers who are inside of area 10 had no idea about 20 and routers inside of 20 had no idea about 10. Okay, routers inside of 20 had no idea about area zero either until we configured the virtual link between two and three. When we did that, that made router three have an interface in area zero being the virtual link. That allowed router three to then become an ABR and do the LSA type three origination like an ABR should. And once that happened, Area 20 was no longer isolated from the rest of the network. It was able to start learning about links in other areas, and other areas were able to start learning about links in Area 20. And guys, that is how virtual links work. If you found this video helpful, I want you to like it, I want you to share it, and I also want you to subscribe. Let me know in the comment section what topics you would like to see me discuss. Until then, you guys have a great day.